Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Graham Show. We're here sitting in Mr. Rick Ellis's office space in New York City. Consequently, today's guest is Rick Ellis, the writer of Jersey Boys, The Addams Family, and the current Broadway hit, Peter and the Starcatcher. Welcome to the show, Rick. Has your love of, of, of words always been part of your life? But my love of words uh, was taught me, I think, uh, through uh, my love of theater to some degree, but only when I became a copywriter at an advertising agency and, and was taught that craft by the uh, estimable Nancy Coyne. And then when uh, I met uh, Roger, uh, who was uh, rehearsing a play with Tom Stoppard, and within that play called The Real Thing, there is a, there is a line uh, which I like to quote, if you get the right words in the right order, you can nudge the world a little. And I mm. became sort of committed to the idea of trying to get the words in the right order. In fact, this isn't preset or anything, but a, a dear friend of mine, um, inscribed this that very line into a uh, into a, a, a cushion, uh, and it says, uh, "I don't think writers are sacred, but words are. They deserve respect. If you get the right well, the right ones in the right order, you can nudge the world a little." And that's um. from the real thing by Tom Stoppard. It's a great um, it's a great little mantra. How fabulous! Uh, and it's and I sit on it every day. <laughs> so osmosis on the other end. Asmosis. Asmosis. Oh, come on. You can't. That was, that was a wonderful setup, Graham. And yeah, I think we should you. end right now because it's not going to get <laughs> and any better. And thank, thank you, Rick, for being a guest <laughs> on The Graham Show. We'll see you next week. You grew up in New York City. Yes, born and bred. When did you first come to, to, to know the theater? When I was three, my mother took my brother, who was six, and me uh, to see My Fair Lady. Uh, that was the first show I saw. I just wanted to be loved, Graham. <laughs> I wanted to find a place where there was love and acceptance. And of course, uh, I'm serious. Mm. That's what I was looking to find. I was mm. looking to find a place where I could feel a, a more profound sense of belonging than I felt elsewhere in my life. Not to say that I was a sad, pathetic person, but I was a sad, pathetic person. And um, you know, I was very driven, very pressured, in a, a very um, over-analyzed, over-educated, uh, over privileged or we didn't have money but we had we still had books I sensed I guess the way so many of us do that the theater was all accepting so you started out as a as an actor your your initial I wanted very very badly to be an actor and uh, I my my folks wanted very very badly for me not to be an actor I think she had painted in giant dripping blood red letters on my <laughs> bedroom wall you want to be an actor act in a courtroom <laughs> She just so badly wanted me to be a lawyer. I applied to Yale Drama School thinking it, I stood no chance at all of getting in. That's the real reason that it's a great professional training program is that when they give you your diploma, they also give you your equity card. So you're in. Your, your last year, your third year at Yale, you are cast in certain um, productions at Yale Rep, which is an equity house. So you become an equity member over the course of that year. And that's a great um, leg up in terms of getting uh, seen for auditions when, you, uh, you know, when you're finished. What, what the audition process is, is they're sort of casting a company. Okay. They'll cast some people who are goofy and tall and like me, or they'll cast some people who are leading man handsome like you, or they'll cast some you know, beautiful women and they'll cast some weird character people and they'll cast older people and they'll cast some younger people. I was very, very young. I was you know, 19. We were we were in the slipstream or in the wake of the, of the Meryl Streep clash. And uh, you know there were certain names that were always mentioned in very hushed tones, beginning and ending always with, uh, uh, with Meryl's. Next up, we're going to talk to Rick Ellis about a particular letter he wrote to Trevor Nunn right after he graduated from Yale. Mm -hmm. 